Pastor, tell me something. So, do they pay you by commission? As far as the school? Uh-uh. Pizza, bro. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's him, not me. Welcome back to my channel. Back by popular demand, I got the right reverend, the good doctor, Scully. <laughs> it's good to have you back, man. Good to be it's back, good. brother Joel. Thank you so yeah. much, man. Look, Thank you. It, is you on tour? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I will. I will say that God has been faithful to me in spite of me. Uh, I've been thankful and grateful, and I've been blessed to be able to come back to a community that I have always loved and that is still showing love to myself and my wife and the ministry that God has placed in us. So uh, we were privy to be able to do ministry the entire month of June. Yeah. Every Sunday here back with a fellow pastor uh, uh, and climaxing even today mm. uh, with Pastor Robert Griffin. And man, God just moved in miraculous ways. And, and Joel, I just wanna say this, the harvest is at a point in place where we have to expect God in unexpected ways in order for us to appreciate him in everything that he's doing. Yes, sir. So as far as the tour, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm thankful that, hey, he's at the end and now uh, it's time for, as they say, get some me time by myself away time. Yeah. So that's what we are. But again, just been thankful and humbled to be able to come back to the community yeah. and to be able to again uh, just uh, operate in the gift of ministry. Man, Pastor, you did your thing this morning. Before oh, you wow. got to Griffin, we thank God for how he used you. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was an awesome experience having you back, back home. Man, and I'm thankful to you, Brother Joel. Yeah. Uh, I was sharing with someone, it's good when good people remember you. Yeah. and open up doors and opportunities for you. Mm -hmm. So I thank you so much. Uh, and man, it was a sweet spirit in the place. Oh my God. It, it was a sweet spirit in that place. Indeed, indeed. Uh, you know what, Pastor? I can say I, I watched you grow up a little bit. See, I remember when your boy was little, yes. real little. Yes, yes. And now, now, now you, you grandpa, because they give you grandbabies and stuff like that. First one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I watched you then grow and, you know, up a little bit and then you got more mature and I was looking at this man just and back then I was going through and I was struggling and I'm so glad that then I understood what God was doing for you know all things work together come on here Romans 8 and 28 yes sir yes sir together. yes sir. for the good and uh, so uh, look you you think you still can pull it like you did 20 years ago Listen, uh, I know I can't pull it like I did 20 years ago, <laughs> but I know somebody who can. I think we're going to be hearing from that individual a little bit later on. All right, I man. know we can. But I want to say this also uh, publicly. I want to say thank you so much, Brother Joel. That was a situation some years ago. You don't even you don't even know anything about this, Brother Joel. But we were in a dark financial season of our life. My wife and I and my three children, we were in a dark financial season of our life. And... Uh, this particular day, my wife was trying to get a fish fillet meal from McDonald's. Her card would not take. You blessed her. You purchased her meal for her. Oh, my God. That was years ago. Yeah, I was, oh, I forgot about that. That was years ago. Matter of fact, wow. my wife shared that testimonial with me just yesterday. And I want to tell you publicly Thank you so much, man of God. You, not, you blessed my home before you even knew that this day would come to be. Thank you. Bishop T.D. Jake said something so profound, and uh, I've always had that mindset. I don't want people in my life that only treat me good because I'm in a high place. Bishop Jake said he watched people, how they treat people who can't do anything for them. 
And because he already know if if it ever gets to the point in place where he can't do anything for them, they're going to treat him the same way. Wow. So again, brother, thank you so much with all humility and appreciation you, for pastor. everything. Sir. Bless you. Uh, yes, sir. I, I know you know how to barbecue too, so yes, sir. Yeah, so that's we, my that's my past side. You'll get a chance to repay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure. I'll make sure. Yeah. Man. yeah. About to look, how do we get from you working in one of the most dangerous places in Mississippi? in the penitentiary then later on educational field and i've seen you working with uh young adults college students and seniors getting ready to graduate then every time we see you you got young babies and third graders and fourth graders does that make up some of who you are make that make sense pal so brother joel the crazy thing about my life is i feel that god has kept me relevant Okay. LL Cool J has been in the industry for years right. and people have watched this man go, 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 grow, 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 but he's never left off the scene because he has always allowed himself to be made over for the next generation. And I just believe that God has sheltered me, he has shielded me, he has kept me in a season of life that even where I am just privy to turn 49, mm. I'm still, I have a voice that's relevant to babies who are in first and second and third grade. My, 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 I guess my life and my career path started in corrections at the Mississippi Department of Corrections. My father was the first African-American male that, has ever, that was ever employed there. And then I also did uh, military. I then I also did uh, uh, warehouse management. Um, I've been in ministry for 27 years now. And now in the school, emotional, social, and learning aspect of my career, I've been privy to be able to intervene and interact with children from pre-K all the way up to college graduates, it's as if God still keeps my voice relevant. And I'm humbled by that. I mean, be honest with you, I understand too much given much is required. And I'm, I'm daily just fact checking myself saying, God, why? Well, God, God what, what, what is it? Because you could have chosen anyone else. You could have given this gift to anyone else. So, so God, why? And I find myself daily, even in the school system, even our school system have taken a drastic change and yeah. turn. I want to, I want to, I want to put this plug in. I want to put this public prayer and request to all public school parents. Re-enter your child's educational life. And I'm not talking about when you get the notice that they're failing. I'm talking about from day one, go meet your teachers, go, go meet their teachers, which is your teachers. Go meet their counselor, which is your counselor. Yes. Go, go meet their principal, which is your principal. So that when situations happen, you won't, you won't show up in defense of a guilty child, but show up the same way L.A. Skirlock and Everett Skirlock will show up to the school. L.A. Skirlock and Everett Skirlock would send myself and my siblings to school with this one message. Get to school, act right, sit down, stay out of trouble. If I get a phone call from that school, mm -hmm. you're going to get it when you get home. That was a defining message of just correction and direction for me because I did not want my dad and my mother to get a phone call to, from the school talking about some Lamont said this, Lamont doing that. Now we have a saga that's really being played out daily. Our children are literally losing their freedom in public school education over cellular phones. The, our children are literally fighting teachers because they are getting their phones taken away. Yes, sir. And the appalling thing about that is the same student that will fight because you take their phone away, if you tell them that they can have their phone but they can go to in school ISS or now they call it reset, and I need for everybody to understand something. ISS reset. Let, let me talk right quick. ISS reset. That's a practice template of future incarceration. Wow. 
because when we were coming up, when we weren't going to act right in the school, the school said, okay, we're going to send you home. Let your parents feed you. Let your parents house you. Let your parents do everything for you. Well, they found out they can't make money with the children at home. So they said, I tell you what, let's, let's put together a system that will be able to hold the students. We can still get our money. So I need for all parents, don't get upset because your child is going to reset or to in-school suspension. Get upset because your child is disrespecting you, your name, your brand. Every family name is a brand. Wow. LeBron James, his name is a brand. Michael Jordan, his name is a brand. Michael Jordan has not played ball in years, but the Jordan brand is still making money. Mm. How, we, we don't go to school anymore, but our children, your name, the Bible speaks of a good name. Yeah. It's better than riches in silver and gold. So I want to encourage parents, please, I'm begging, I'm making a public plea. Please re-enter the schools in a positive way. Don't show up with fluffy house shoes, <laughs> fluffy house coats, <laughs> fluffy attitudes, Talk, fluffy words, mm -hmm. defending a fluffy situation, but show up with integrity and character. Look, so what are, what could you encourage um, teachers that are beginning to go into this field because I think some of the videos show that this was happening to substitute teachers that was going there did we know that it was grad you know graduation season that's a lot of people getting ready to go into the teaching field what would you how would you encourage uh, them man you know back when we were coming up in school and being raised in the community teachers work for the passion not for the pay Oh. Let me say this again. Teachers work for the passion, not for the pay. Well, now in the educational system, most of our student, most of our teachers are literally one or two years removed from college, or if not, just one or two months removed from college. So they are entering into a career path that is now disruptive. It's lacking of integrity. Mm -hmm. It's lacking of structure. Uh, so I encourage teachers, first of all, if you're going to enter the workplace as a teacher, make sure it's your God-given assignment. I don't care how much money you can make with a master's degree or a PhD, if you have not been assigned to education to deal with children, with babies, I would not encourage you to enter that workplace because it is not for the faint of heart. It is a tense environment. We have so many teachers because of the lack of classroom control that are literally abandoning their careers because they cannot take it anymore. Yeah. People are literally leaving from the educational platform and career path to go into more technical, to go into things that are less people aspect. Yes. So I want to encourage every teacher, if you are in college now and you are seeking an educational degree, if you know that's not your God-given assignment, abort the mission. Hmm. Abort, abort the mission. Find what your purpose is. Because if you get into educational system right now and it's not your God-given assignment, you will find yourself living miserable days. I truly feel that you are here on divine assignment because you've been here all month yes, long. And even when today you already hit an assignment, you gain an assignment on your way to an assignment. And um and then you wind it up here. Uh, there was something that you shared earlier on your page, and it was a testimony, and I think it was so profound. I want you to share that testimony. Wow. You know, God never seems to amaze me now. It's just that he increases my faith. Because to say that God amazes me means to say that I, I had doubt of his ability to do the things that are amazing. Yeah. So uh, last week after the kingdom assignment and I was getting ready to uh, come back home, we were getting ready to come home, but we, that Saturday got a phone call that a former church member had uh, taken you. Matter of fact, they found him, this particular church member and that church member had was non-responsive took him to the took that person to the first hospital was there for 10 hours icu on life assessment machine moved that person to another hospital 
was there, had no activities, had, had Brandon who's still breathing a little bit on his own, but was not cognate, nothing. Myself and I know the saints, I, because when I got the phone call, I started calling saints. Yeah. Hey, pray for us, pray. Listen, I need, we need prayer, we need prayer. Got to the hospital and Brother Joel got to the room this individual was on the machine, lifeless. I, we, I talked and as I was talking to the mother and the other family member, the spirit pricked me and said, pray. Mm -hmm. And we started invoking prayer right there in the room. Touch. 15 minutes after leaving out of the room, one of the family friends come out and says, he, this person is coming out. Wow. <laughs> they're, they're, they're coming out. Uh, so we leave so that they can finish everything. About 30 minutes later, get a phone call. The same individual yeah. that 45 minutes earlier was lying in the bed, hands strapped to the bed, yeah. machine breathing for him, mm -hmm. was seated up, Thank you, Jesus. eating, talking, mm -hmm. eyes open. Let me say again. Yes, sir. Can't no one tell me what prayer won't do. Yes, sir. And to see God move in those type of ways, mm -hmm. it is a compelling factor of mm -hmm. my faith that I know that God is still faithful and loyal to Ooh, his word. Thank God. Thank God. Listen, somebody needed to hear that. Hmm. Uh, somebody did need to hear that because we are surrounded with bad news daily. Not weekly, but daily. And just in case... You thought about giving up. He's still in the healing business. Prayer still changes things. Bible tells us that the fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Yes. much. And I thank God for it. I think James said there could be any sickness among them. Let them hmm, call on the elders. Let so them. don't forget to call your pastor every now and then. That's the reason why he said I give pastor according to my own heart. That's the reason why. I thank God for that. We need to hear that, Pastor. Yes, sir. We need yes, to sir. hear that. I know when we are in service and when the spirit moves, and we get caught up, Pastor. Yes, sir. And uh, we kind of found you caught up. What's that? <laughs> I officially don't like this man. <laughs> don't tell nobody I told y'all. I officially don't like this man. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cause I mean I don't know, pal. You was you was there, you know. Well, well, look. 